someday. Um, I love everyone here and, and, and everyone that I've met, including of course all of you guys. Uh, I was well, I ain't would no say fucking good, way, right? like I normally do. Well, but, ain't no you know, way, it's not good. <laughs> uh, winners have been. I've already told management about. The Holy shit! This is hot garbage. Yeah. Ugh. Why is Static Tokyo here? How the mighty has fallen. Niji Sanji is now a black company. Well, at least that's what people are trying to say. Is that what I'm saying? Uh, you got me. <laughs> but let's not get opinionated too quickly here. Before I get into the video, I want to say that in this video, I'm doing my best to portray things that are confirmed and set in stone. So I won't be talking about things like DM leaks and shit like that, you know? Because in my honest opinion, that just sounds like niggas speaking Japanese. I don't know, I just don't wanna touch it. Oh, and also, don't go harassing the livers. I'm not gonna lie and say that I'm not disappointed in how some of the livers handled the situation. But let's be normal niggas and just voice our concerns instead of fucking bombing them. All right, let's go. Static Tokyo is not a news VTuber. I called you and okay. we were gushing about our manager. <laughs> okay. We had like a 30 minute conversation about how amazing our manager was. Foreshadowing. Now, this is where we kind of get a hint that there is something a little iffy with Niji Sanji's EN branch. I have a few projects that I recommended to the shoujo to put on the main channel. Um, but it was just so surprising to me that, you know, my manager's like, how can I help? You need me to hire somebody, you need an artist, you need like, a background person. Like, what do you need? How is this going to go? Do you need editing? Do you need music? The woman was too stunned uh, uh, to speak. Uh, uh, uh. And I, I, I told her I'm not used to that. Huh? Yeah, so off rip, it seems like Niji don't really support their livers. Yo, this shit is actually trash. In comparison to other agencies. This is also slightly shadowed by another member while they're gushing about their new manager at another agency. I'm not going to say names because I don't know if I'll get fucking hit in the head. What they're saying probably at the time wasn't anything substantial in the grand scheme of things. If anything, it just meant that Niji Sanji was a little incompetent. But then there is another member that we got to talk about real quick. It sucked so much to be backstabbed by so many of them. When I put, I did so much behind the scenes for them. And I did so much. Zion. Or, or Sayu, however you want to say. I, will, will she will she bonk me if I say her new life name? She's been very open about it. I don't know. Uh, Zion is a very iffy topic to talk about. Yeah, I love little boys. And so I use little boys. You know, I'd rather have a daddy than a mommy and a little boy than a mommy. Which is why I didn't really cover her whole situation when it went down like last year or something like that. Because quite frankly, I didn't really want to touch on it because her jokes weren't really I love little boys. funny to me. But don't get me wrong, I knew there were jokes. I got the sense that there were jokes. I don't think she's a bad person. She's probably great, just not for me personally in the humor sense. But let's talk about how shit went down in her time of being a Niji. Zion, obviously an ex-liver of Niji Sanji, debuted in the seventh wave of Niji Sanji EN branch. That shit did not last long at all. She was terminated for, well, a lot of things. I ain't reading all that. Some of which felt kind of understandable. Some of them felt kind of nitpicky. Uh, but after she left, she made claims on how she was treated while being in the company. It sucked so much to be backstabbed by so many of them. When I put, I did so much behind the scenes for them. And I did so much to show them that I loved them and that I cared. You know, Kotoka said that she couldn't even wish her well. She couldn't even wish Zion well. Like on stream is what she said. I saw her in person and became friends with her in private before we were ever we ever had anything to do with each other but the last thing i did leave them with was saying that they were worth more than they thought they were a lot of them thought they were nothing outside of that place and i was like no you are so wrong i still have the last message i sent them and i was like you guys are so wrong you guys are worth so much more than you think you are and that that company is gonna make you think you are I hated seeing them think that they were nothing. 
Now, of course, this is just Zion kind of yapping, but in the light of what's happening now, or what's happened, I don't know when this video comes out, um, I'm kind of inclined to believe her a little bit. So all for it, we got wind of mismanagement and just an unhealthy working environment. How do I put it? There was a really big opportunity that was, that was given to me, or rather, I don't know, asked of me. And offered to me, offered to me, <laughs> offered to me, and uh, and I get why it wasn't accepted, but it's really frustrating. Of course, I'm not gonna be talking about people like Vox or basically Luxium, that's like their poster boys, but I'm talking more so Homo, Kyo. And Helsa Lin got blue balled out of her mind by the agency. Now, Niji Sanji seemingly doesn't like when livers go out of their little purple bubble, per se. Uh, you want to collab with someone outside of Niji? You need to go through some hoops. You want to do a tournament? You have to get a ticket. You want to do a project? It has to go through stages of verification. And honestly, this all makes sense. It's more so to protect not only you, but the company. But we already talked about how mismanaged the EN branch is as a whole. It got to the point that some livers lost big opportunities. But there was a really big opportunity that was that was given to me or rather i don't know asked of me and offered to me offered to me <laughs> offered to me and uh and i get why it wasn't accepted but it's really frustrating but <laughs> Things weren't negotiated or anything. It's just flat out no. I'm just really frustrated about it. Because I felt like maybe it was. Maybe a once in a lifetime opportunity or something. I don't know. I was really excited about it. Holy shit! This is hot garbage! Yeah. So much of a shit show that some talents had to spend their own money to do certain things. My mom scolded me about this because during all of this, she looked at my financials and I made zero profit last year. <laughs> uh, she was like, I have to spend less because you spent $200,000 last year which isn't the norm <laughs> okay mr man all right sorry mr man when he's like what do you want to do and i was like i want to do so many projects i want to host events i want to host events with so many different indies and different companies in the west and everything and then mr man was like we can get sponsors for that i was like huh and he's like yeah you don't have to pay out of your own pocket anymore I was like, what? <laughs> the fact she got shocked at that information is baffling, considering she came from a... Hold on. <clears throat> God damn it, you make the towns pay for their own projects sometimes. That's fucking crazy. I'm not gonna lie to you, gang. Then I've already told management about the winners. Um, It's really uh just like logistic stuff being going through. I can't really say much about it, but... Now... December of 2023, Selene releases a music video covering Lily Pichu's song, Last Cup of Coffee. It's the song you're probably hearing right now is the background music. She uploads the song on December 25th, I think, and it gets taken down by management, which we will get into later. Selene bosses up and tells people to re-upload the song since a lot of time and effort was put into it, and then... Radio Silence. Now, here's the thing. The company locked her out of her account, including her Twitter, due to her being silently suspended, uh, which is confirmed that she was suspended because it says it on the termination notice. Uh, on the 27th of December, we get an update of Selene's Twitter saying that she was in an accident and is currently in the hospital. And keep in mind, this notice was given from the company, not Selene herself. Even though they're using I, just remember she got suspended like a day or two before that, so she couldn't have made this sweet in this time. Later down the line, we learn what happened wasn't an accident. She made an attempt on her life. Uh, not cool. After the company gives the update, we hear nothing from Selene for months, and she even missed some collabs. One, because she was in the hospital, and two, she was silently suspended. Uh, due to the silence, though, niggas went bonkers. I was, I would say, 
say what's good like I normally do, but you know, it's not good. <laughs> While Selene is basically missing for a, a while at this point, Kamu gives. Um, I'm leaving to pursue other creative avenues. And I hope that my next adventure will lead me to more possibilities. And that sounds like so corporate. <laughs> Which I bet she's happy she did, considering what is happening right now. Palma left more gracefully and even had a graduation stream, and of course, she had to be more vague on the reasons of why she was dipping out. Shortly after, Kyo announces graduation on the 1st of February, and as of recording, is doing his graduation stream right now, which is the 16th of February. Uh, and Kyo has also been kind of hit with Niji Sanji's hard management low-key with the suspected silent suspension due to his remarks on Korea's cosmetic surgery. So earlier today, like this morning, I had someone come into my chat and pretty much be like, oh, they insinuated that I was racist because I talked about Vox having plastic surgery in Korea when he got his new model and the face changed. Now, me personally, I didn't think this was a bad joke to make at all because um, Korea is factually known as a plastic surgery hub. Of the world, it is. It's medical tourism is one of Korea's biggest industries. He's not even wrong. Bro didn't even do anything. Now with Selin's disappearance, Pamu's, and Kyo's graduation, a lot of people are starting to think something is up. Ain't right. And uh, everything went bad. Selin gets terminated. Now everyone knew this termination notice was trash. This is one of the first legal fuck ups. Why would you post this publicly? The termination notice tries to document Selene's misdoings and push the narrative that she has violated rules, even though she didn't. If you want a more thorough breakdown on the document, there is a link to a video of an actual lawyer breaking it down. I think it's a fun watch. And they are way more qualified than my goofy ass when it comes to legal matters. So yeah, link in the description. Now Selene didn't even know she was terminated before the post was made, which is fucked up. Uh, Doki Bird, formerly known as Selene, obviously, uh, put out a statement stating that she was hospitalized for an attempt, uh, that was caused by a toxic work environment and bullying. You cannot be for real. And that she even tried to dip back in January. People, of course, were very supportive of Doki Bird, and she herself wanted to move on from the whole thing. Um, thank you everybody. Let's, let's laugh again soon, okay? No more crying. No more sad tears. Let's be happy for the new year. No, honestly, it should have stopped there. Niji Sanji, though, said fuck all that. The real issue here, however, is that someone I trusted and considered a friend not only recorded me in secret, but also that these recordings were held without my knowledge for almost an entire year. Allura offered her channel for a response to all the commotion on a live stream that was just a black screen. The imagery is lacking. Uh, this stream, in my opinion, was highly unnecessary. Uh, I did a video breaking down the stream already, but for those that don't know, it was basically Allura, Vox, and Ike making their statements on a document that was presented to any color by Doki's lawyer. Which is something that Doki Bird later said was never supposed to be public and was for legal eyes only. But they spoke about how they had private information of theirs within the document, which I feel like they low-key snitched on themselves because I can only imagine the people that were bullying Doki would be the only ones brought up. But that's just my opinion. Uh, Vox, in my opinion, tries to paint Doki in a bad light by saying she recorded a call between them. The real issue here, however is that someone I trusted and considered a friend not only recorded me in secret, but also that these recordings were held without my knowledge for almost an entire year. The fact that this was held throughout our friendship is really upsetting to me. Until now, I had always looked up to Selene as my senpai, and I felt really lucky to be her friend. Having to talk about this now and seeing how this has played out is, again, heartbreaking. But this wasn't even a personal attack on him, it was more so to prove favoritism in the company. And let's be honest, there is favorites in every company. And recording calls is allowed in Canada with a single party consenting. In my opinion, I do not think that it was a form of harassment. Harassment is not an opinion, it's a legal analysis. There are things that legally constitute harassment. Like you're, <laughs> as a friend, I don't think, I don't feel this is harassment. Go fuck yourself. It's a legal analysis. Uh, Ike 
drink water. I'm a little bit all over the place right now. <clears throat> Excuse me for a second. I don't yeah, even I know why I was there, to be honest. Uh, they also brought up screenshots oh! to basically prove that she released the video when she wasn't supposed to. Although, they took a long time to clear it, and they really only had to clear due to ex-livers being present, because Doki Bird herself went to, like, Lily Pichu, the producers, everyone that needed to grant her permission to even do the song, she got permission from. That was the only thing they kind of brought up that kind of holds any value, in my opinion. If you want to watch the whole stream, I'll link in the description as well with my other sources. Doki's response starts off with her saying that she was trying to move on and didn't even look into anything regarding legal documents after, like, you know, her whole termination type thing. But due to the stream, she had to talk to her lawyer again about how to respond to the whole thing. Basically, the document being brought up in the stream was something private that was supposed to be between her, her lawyer, and any color's lawyers. And yes, they did have personal info of not only her, but others. What? There were nothing crazy like addresses, but she did say that her recording of Vox wasn't even for reasons Vox claimed. It was for a distribution test, whatever the fuck that means. The CEO also released a video making statements, but it mostly felt like they were apologizing to the investors and shit. And honestly, they should have just released the CEO's response. And now we're here. Uh, obviously there can be more I could say about it. There's the whole 39 gas response that pissed some people off. Uh, leaked DMs, uh, a whole ass fan document that I don't even really want to talk about it because it just makes me want to jump off. But yeah, what do you think? Let me know. Uh, also, please go over all the sources that I have and maybe find some yourself if I didn't cover something. Uh, I just want y'all to come up with your own opinion. Uh, and yeah, let me know what you think in the comments. You know the drill. If you want my videos early, become a member or a patron. Subscribe, because a lot of people don't. And hit the notification bell, because I do stream here on YouTube and on Twitch sometimes. Oh, and I also got a Discord, and all my other links is going to be in the description as well. And uh, I'm going to go. Peace.